So, welcome back. Now we just quickly, we got the kickoff meeting lecture essentially, and it's split into two sort of parts. Um, the first part being um, like more of a, an administrative side. So these are just the normal lecture slides. I'm gonna go through and annotate the differences for this semester. Um, I go over things such as the dates, um, the assessment, and the second half is more so um, doing a very basic introduction to um, what real-time operating systems are because this is the core of the, the course is our tosses um, and namely how they're done used on embedded systems. Uh, I'll still cover the embedded system knowledge even though you won't have uh, any hands-on experience with them this semester, unfortunately. So, <clears throat> um, so I guess I, I sort of introduced myself. So this is me, Alex Hoffman, whatever. Um, this is my email address where you can contact me. You can't find me in my that room at the moment, um, uh, but also you can contact me through GitHub. So um, if you have issues or whatever, you can contact me through my username, tag me in things, and I'm more than happy to, to be active through GitHub. It's a great way of um, interfacing with each other because you can also leave comments and review code directly. Um, yeah, so. Course content, I mentioned this quickly earlier at one point, um, everything is hosted on the GitLab. So if you search for ESPL, ESPL course content, you'll find this repository and in there is where we'll push everything. So all of the PDFs for the exercises, my annotated notes, um, essentially everything bar these videos. Um, Moodle, we won't use it. The only thing that we'll use Moodle for is uploading your submissions because you can. it's an easy way for me to get hold of all of your code. Um, Tweedback, obviously we're not in a lecture so we're using this. So, da -da -da -da. semester schedule, so let's get onto it. So, Lecture. To now I'm going to do an introduction to real-time systems in software and in hardware. So I'll give a bit of an overview of how they run on hardware, but again, we won't really get much of a look into this this semester. The lab, though, will focus around, and this won't change, is the free Arthas API. This is still the same. Um, instead of using the Game, Bus, Game Boy, uh, uh, the, the microcontroller, you'll be using the emulator, and we'll still get you, we're not quite sure yet, on... The capabilities or what we can actually ask of you um, with the emulator but we will probably aim for some sort of a game as the project again um, yes so the prerequisites and I stress this every semester it's probably this semester maybe more so because the because we're not having any contact hours the the learning is going to be a lot more like you're going to have to try and solve your problems yourself. I imagine getting tutor input is gonna be a little more a little more challenging than normal because also trying to debug someone's code via a video conference is a lot trickier than when you're sitting next to them. So I mean I'm everyone should give it a solid crack, but I'm saying now that you really do need to have a not like a like you don't need to be an advanced C program, but you need to have a solid understanding of the basics of like how, how data structures work in C, how memory is structured, um, what pointers are, how to use functions, how to use header files, how to a basic understand of compiling code, although a large part of this will be explained in the Git tutorial, which you will do this week or and next week. Um, but really, if you find this course too challenging on C, I always recommend, and it happens a lot, that students who are probably at the beginning of their studies don't really have that much exposure to it yet. I say keep going with the course as long as you can. You can always take this course again next semester or whatever, and the more practice, the better. So C is, a, is a quite a challenging language, but it's a practice thing, you know, and you just have to be motivated and really wanting to learn it, and it's not that challenging, right? Um, so we don't need this this semester because we don't have any microcontrollers with I.O., We'll be sort of replacing this with um, Linux sockets. But this is wrapped um, inside the AIO. So this is the asynchronous IO um, library. So you'll be using a bit of IO stuff, but not really like on a very uh, low level. So 
Um, but you'll still need to know the basic idea of how memory is managed and this is applicable for any C programming because the beauty of C, but why people, a lot of people are scared of it or find it complex, is that it's very low level. You can access individual memory addresses, which means that you can write extremely efficient code. But obviously it's not the same as when you just get a Python script and you just said everything, you don't have to give a type and you just say this is a variable, that's a variable, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's it's, you need to have an understanding of, of memory, you know? So this course is a lot of work normally, and I imagine this semester it will still be a lot of work, but the reward is that you learn a lot, like a lot. Um, students at the end of semester, the ones that make it, um, are usually very thankful that they pulled through in it. And I'm sorry that if you find that the course is unfairly tough, but you know, in this course you will learn if you want to go into embedded development that you'll learn skills here that are that are very important especially things such as um git which i've now made a very core part of the course because it is a practical like it's not a a theoretical concept or something that you'll learn at universities it's how to use a practical tool that any code developing job will involve you using so by learning to use it you're really learning an extremely valuable skill and being good at C is just a good thing to, to have. So anyway, the, there are essentially um, two phases of like the course, meaning you have like the lectures and the exercises. So the lectures, um, I'm going to release a few of them this week as I get around to it, mainly this one, the setup, um, the sort of tutorial and getting the VM running um, and a lecture on Git. So these are the ones that you need this week because the first thing you're going to do is the Git tutorial, which is part of the exercises. So you have these exercises and the course is essentially split into these two phases. And one of them is sort of like the introduction where I run lectures and I explain things. Um, I give demos with code and try and sort of um, show you new concepts and how to use things. And then you do these exercises and the exercises themselves don't give you a grade, they're pass fail. So here, um, ignore this date, I didn't update these. The dates are coming in, in the next slides. So the essentially I want to see, like they're not like 50% to pass, I mean like I want these exercises done, like 100% complete. And if you get them done, then you can continue on. And it's not because I wanna set something like saying, um, to really push you to do them, all I'm saying is that if you can't do these exercises, um, then you're going to really struggle in the project. Uh, and so it's like, you can't do all of the exercises this semester, but I'm still going to want to, to want you to submit most of the exercises, the ones that I say we can still do, because if you, if you can't do them, the project is just going to be too much work for you or out of your sort of, um, abilities, like beyond your abilities at the moment. Right? So, um, this is obviously not valid. Duh, duh, duh. Yes, yes, so we're here to help. Um, a lot of this though, this is, oh, wait, oh no, where's my scroll? Da, da, da. Don't I have a bar here somewhere? Bear with me, what's going on? Okay, sorry about that. So, this is extremely important, self-study. So, you're gonna be confronted with new libraries, like Free Arthos in itself is a large, essentially collection of functions and libraries um, that you'll have to learn to navigate, right? And so we can't, I can't explain to you how to use queues, tasks, semaphores, timers, these things, like, I mean, they can give you the basic concepts of how um, synchronization and locking works, but using the actual APIs to implement code that uses these um, paradigms will require you to, motive, or to go and find the documentation, to read the documentation, to try out the example, to find example code. Self-study and like with most coding, it's all going to come down to you figuring out your problems when you get really stuck, like when you have things you don't know how, like why, what something's going wrong, then we're there for you. But if you come to us and ask us how do I create a task, we'll say, hey, 
I want you to go and Google that first, right? <coughs> and also read all the document, all the read all of the PDFs that we give you. Things such as coding best practices there. There's some things like style guides that will help you to write clean code and clean code is easy to read and easy to debug. So it'll help yourself, right? So second phase of the course is the project and the exam. So the exam, this is still a big asterisk, big question mark. We don't know if this is gonna happen this semester based on whether the tour opens up, whether we're allowed to have you all sit in a room together. Um, the exam was always sort of set as if you did the project and you did the coursework yourself, you're pretty much okay for the exam, right? Like it's not one of these ones where we're asking you to do a huge project and also study for a very large exam. So I wouldn't stress about the exam too much. It's definitely something that if you committed throughout the entire semester, you've got no problem of doing. It might not even happen this semester. We don't know. <coughs> the project itself used to be group work. This is not the case this semester. So the projects themselves will be a bit smaller because everyone's gonna be doing it by themselves. Um, but you will be still implementing a game. So we'll get some sort of a game. I'm thinking Space Invaders that you'll all have to in implement Space Invaders using real-time operating system paradigms, right? So you'll have to do it with multi multiple tasks who send data via like queues and use locking and whatnot, right? So then you'll present this project or you'll submit it probably not presenting it depending on the numbers we get. Also with the video calls is a bit tough, but you'll have to submit that. So you'll be submitting the exercises and then the, um, the project. So we don't have any lab. This is also irrelevant, but these dates are accurate. So this is obviously not relevant. So we are, well, this should be up on the 20th, right? So we have the, today we have the kickoff and the Git um, um, lecture. So you should go and, or well, you can start the Git tutorial this week. As of now, you can do it. I will hold or I'll upload a lecture next week where I go over RTOSs. So I will give an explanation, a more in-depth explanation of using free RTOS, the API, the sort of ideas behind free uh, time real-time operating systems. And then depending on how I get on with recording all of this stuff. I will also do lectures here, but these are more like um, tutorial lectures, right? So I might just sit down with my laptop and record myself and I'll just go through um, state machine code and explain sort of not something that's super applicable to real-time operating systems, but I'm also trying to help students um, under, like sort of get exposed to basic things like state machines, which is something that are very important in a lot of different applications, right? So these will be, I'll probably just uploading videos um, through this exercise phase, but essentially for you, uh, the first key date that you need to take note of is that on the 27th of the 5th will be the submission of the exercise. Now the exercises are, um, there's two PDFs which will become available in the GitLab that will have exercise two and three um, which will have certain um, exercises in them. And the first exercise, which is also included, is the Git tutorial, which will, I will um, introduce in the Git lecture. So that is also included in exercise and that must also be submitted before or on the 27th. And then after that, <clears throat> we get into the project phase, which um, ends with the project being submitted on the, on the 15th of July. And this is still a question mark the exam, whether it'll happen or not, we don't know. So course grading, this, this is obviously a question mark. And if this falls out then the grading will probably just be hundred um, percent of the project, but this is still, um, the, the exercises are still very much a part of it. So you still pass fail. I would require you that you submit. I usually look for 90 plus percent of the final of the exercises this semester because the hard, like some of the hardest parts of exercises are not doable because we don't have the hardware, I'm really gonna be looking for 100% of the exercises because you will be doing less than what is normally required of the students, literally because we can't do it on the emulator. <clears throat> and then you obviously have the project, which is um, graded. So I'm gonna quickly stop this now and that'll be one lecture.